So the reptilian brain works much differently than your neocortex, the limbic system inside. You, you have two brains. One brain is constantly telling you, holy shit, there's a giant emergency. And the other uh, brain is telling you, no, it's totally fine. Everything's totally fine. Uh, these are the two different systems that we have um, in our body. You, you actually could argue we have three systems, but, uh, um, but, but I'm, I'm actually getting off topic. The, the, these two systems, the reptilian and the mammalian, um, have very different purposes. And notice what happens with the reptilian. The first thing it asks is, are you dangerous? And if it thinks you're dangerous, it deals with you. And if not, it goes into this other algorithm loop. That algorithm is called, is it novel? Meaning, is it different? Is it different? Has it changed? Because if it's changed, I need to reevaluate and go back to the start and recompute, is it dangerous again? Now, if it hasn't changed, guess what? We just ignore it. We don't waste the calories. So is it dangerous? Yes or no? And then once you get past the, the uh, is it dangerous? It, now it's in your view, is it novel? Is it doing something different than it used to do? Notice it didn't, the reptilian brain isn't checking to see, is it moral? <laughs> It's not asking, is it uh, ethically proper? No. It's only asking, is it being novel? Is it doing the same thing it's always done? And if the answer is yes, it ignores it. It says, well, nah, it's all good. That's, that's what you're dealing with, with America and the NWL. And that's why we're not seeing it. Because so many of us are living in a limbic brain mode where all we can do is simply evaluate, is it novel? Is it something that I need to worry about? Because even if it's still invading foreign countries, it was doing that before. <laughs> it, so it must be fine. Now, some of you are like, but James, we're not reptiles. And I agree, we are not. We are fine, fine, upstanding specimens, human, human beings we are. But when you put a human through dissonance, the neocortex gets jacked. Uh, I call this empathy jacking, but it, it doesn't always, it, you don't have to use that word if you don't want. If you feel a, a mind, an emotional, if you feel an empathic uh, haptic device, uh, uh, an input device, you're going to overload it with dissonance if you want to. And all you have to do is just keep lying to it. And, and here you have a system that's dying to give sympathy to other things. It's dying to uh, create community, the mammalian, the neocortex. It's trying to create community through emotive means. It's trying to emote with things. And as you step up every morning, when you, every morning, Sadly, the first thing I do is on my, my freaking little iPad thing that has my alarm thingy. Because usually I'm like laying down and I'm reading this thing and it shuts off. It, when I wake up, I hit that button and I can't take it off. I've tried. The first thing I see is that Apple News is showing me on the right. And, and so pretty much as soon as I wake up, I'm reminded, oh, yeah, we live in a world of lies. Like we live in like a massive, massive world of lies. It. it as soon as I remember that, I enter into a much different state of being. All of us do. All of us become hijacked by just the sheer calories it takes to even figure out who's telling the truth anymore. And it turns into a limbic messiah movement. What happens is, is that the neocortex gets shut off. It's just like, I, I can't fucking handle any of you people, so I'm not making any decisions anymore. The limbic system is allowed to emerge. This is how they actually turn you into a reptilian. Most of us are functioning reptilians. And if you look at shock trauma, that's what happens to your body. Your body vasoconstricts, right? Everything dilates, but at the same time, your core shuts off all the extremities. It's like, I don't need arms. Fuck that. I'm in shock. I don't need legs. No, no, no. I don't need that. 
I'll just stay on my chest because things are really bad right now. I remember jumping into Rainbow Lake as a kid and, uh, oh God, it was so cold. And I didn't know this could happen to body. I, I jumped in, everyone had dared me to. And so I was like, well, sure, I have to because I've been double dog dared. And I, as soon as I jumped in, I could not move. I, I, I could not move. <laughs> it was really weird. It's a weird experience to have that uh, hypothermia, instant hypothermia. And it's instant because your limbic, your limbic system actually says, neocortex, you're such a dumbass. Why did you, why? I trusted you and you threw me into this water. I'm no longer listening to you anymore. It takes over. And, and that limbic system is directly tied to your um, polyvagal nerve. This polyvagal nerve is a nerve system that wraps around your lungs, your heart, your intestines, your stomach, and I think it's your liver. Pretty sure it's liver. This vasoconstriction, it, it's a, a nerve that, that wraps around there. Um, it, it has the capacity to put you in shock instantly. How? It can squeeze the fuck out of you. It can constrict all those muscles at once. And you, you instantly dilate from that because the rest of your body is like, oh, fuck. You can think of it like uh, kicking on the nitrous booster almost or in a car. Or if you don't know what that means, it's a, a, now you're going to breathe out of your mouth and your nose. You're really going to pull some oxygen in. Your neocortex is in holy shit mode. And that holy shit mode is great. Because it, it, it saves your life, it, it dodges things in traffic, and you're like, oh, that's why it has to uh, bypass the neocortex. It can't afford that half second. Your neocortex takes roughly about a half second to uh, override the limbic system. So your limbic system reacts first. It's the very first thing out of the gate that reacts to every single situation that happens. Only after does the neocortex come in and say, hey, let me give you some chemicals because you need to calm your shit, man. This is a country club. I don't need you pulling out your reptile in here and start biting people's heads off. That's sort of like the conversation that it has with itself. You can turn someone into a permanent reptile though. How? You keep up the dissonance so much where as soon as you wake up, the victim enters into reptilian core mode. He enters into low caloric burning mode so that he can survive. So he starts to process his world completely differently. Now he's like maybe 80% reptilian, 20% human, but he doesn't know. He truly doesn't understand what's happening to his system. Why? Because we're not told to somatically connect to our bodies. That's why we're told to get the fuck out of our bodies as soon as possible. It's, men, you know this. That's why they cut the end of your dick off. It, 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 if you're out of your body, someone else can sit in. This is what I said last time. Sorry. But that's how possession kicks in. That's how the system takes over. So this limbic shock becomes a state of awareness <laughs> where it becomes your new base. Your new base now is limbically controlled, basically. You're in full reptilian mode all the time, which means, guess what? Guess what? Let me hit share just so we're clear on this. If you're in full reptilian mode, where's morals here? Where in this process does it say, is that moral? And of course the answer is it doesn't say that because reptilians don't have morals. A baby reptile, a baby lizard walking in front of his mother, there's a good chance his mom's going to eat the baby. It's, it's just, that's what you get. 